Studio 6 Welcome to Think, Design, Provoke, the podcast. An intimate space where every week you receive inspiration about the fascinating world of interior design and all the benefits and effects in your lifestyle. My name is Francesca, and we will create meaningful conversations to unveil the enigmatic perception of interior design as a discipline that simply focuses on aesthetics. We will expose everything from interiors to its relationship to architecture, surroundings, history, and culture. We will challenge the misconception of interior spaces confined in architectural boundaries. We will understand that interior spaces provide the setting for human activity and are created to fulfill human desires and needs where sensory pleasures and engagement are celebrated. That is the built environment, the connection between individuals, physical spaces, experience, emotions, and its social consequences. I am your host, and I invite you to join the design conversations that will elevate your consciousness about interiors. Consciousness that will embrace the beautiful possibilities of manifesting all your senses in your space. Hello, hello. Welcome to episode 10 of Think, Design, Provoke, the podcast. I am super happy to be here connecting with you on another Friday of Valuable Design Conversations. Hi, double digits. Can you believe we have 10 episodes already? This started the other day and here we are entering to the double digits realm. So excited and grateful for your company and support all these weeks. This podcast is presented by Studio Chess Interior Architecture Design Studio. In this 10th episode, we are going to converse about the relationship of furnishings and space and its constant dialogue. The role and relationship between furnishings and space is of great relevance. So let's start by defining furnishings. Furnishings are used in both interior and exterior spaces and include art, window treatments, which means curtains, blinds, or drapery, casework, which refer to built-in cabinets, bookcases, or other forms of storage cabinetry, furniture, vegetation, and accessories. The relationship between furniture and space becomes a constant dialogue in which design, aesthetics, and materiality contribute greatly to the dimension and atmosphere of a space. Spaces that are cohesive and positively influence our everyday lives are tied together throughout construction elements and other design scales like furnishings. A holistic design approach cannot exclude these key elements. They are an important part of the equation for sure. As true spatial orchestrators, designers and architects have the ability to craft spaces that are visually appealing, feel welcoming, harmonious, and functional. Beyond the construction process, the soft furnishing stage of a project is where the story is completely told and the atmosphere of the space is celebrated. Furniture, and I refer to large movable pieces like seating, tables, chairs, and beds, which are used to make the space you live, work, or entertain suitable are an integral part of the design process and definitely elevate the spatial experience. These pieces must complement the room they occupy, and the room itself must be designed to ensure seamless synchronization with the furniture. Here is where the dialogue comes into place. For example, the decision of a window placement can be made thinking in advance of the furniture plan layout in order to have an indoor-outdoor experience interaction while sitting in the space. Also, the strategic placement of wall outlets like receptacles, switches, and thermostats are significantly important because it directly impacts how the furniture will be laid out. 
Sometimes, floor outlet considerations for specific spaces function where floating furniture is laid out and receptacles are needed to provide electricity to a device like a desk with a computer or even a floor lamp, just to mention some of the scenarios. To optimize spaces to their fullest potential, there are some key points and design principles to take into account when arranging furniture. First, be mindful that proportions are super important in the relationship between furniture and space. Understanding the shape of the space, its dimensions, and any architectural elements like columns, windows, doors, or a fireplace are crucial to select the appropriate sized pieces and position them successfully to maintain the balance between all the elements I just mentioned. Second to consider is the space for circulation and traffic to be one of the top priorities. Spaces need to breathe. Let me repeat that. <laughs> Spaces need to breathe. Functionality happens when the necessary space to move around freely and comfortably has been provided. Number three, whether it is a residential or a commercial space, furniture layouts are what create conducive environments and foster conversations which are necessary for social interactions. It creates comfort and a sense of togetherness. Fourth is a focal point. Spaces tend to be designed around one object, whether it be a feature wall water fountain or a picture window with a stunning outdoor view. Once this is identified, the furniture layout can be oriented accordingly. Arranging the furniture layout to take advantage of the stunning views or the focal point object so it can be enjoyed is key. Fifth, flexibility. We have chatted before about hybrid and multifunctional spaces, spaces that are intended to be used in different ways. For example, a family room that is also a playroom for children. Modular furniture is an excellent option for flexible spaces. Because of the shape and size, it can be easily reconfigured and rearranged to accommodate the changing needs. Sixth, visual balance and variety. You already know that balance is the first and most important design principle. Let's think about an area rug within a furniture arrangement. Area rugs are great for anchoring different pieces of furniture and adding texture and color to the composition. The area rug size is key to centering it around the seating arrangement. Too small or too big of an area rug in relationship with the furniture arrangement will create a scale issue. So as a rule of thumb, the shape and size of this accessory should be in scale with the space and the furniture arrangement. The patterns and colors should coordinate with the upholstery fabrics and textiles used on window treatments for a harmonious coordination. The coordination of all those textures and materials are vital for the success of a space. Last key point, number seven, taste. Fulfilling the needs of those who will inhabit the space is a rule for the space function, style, and preference. For example, the furniture and materials selected for a space dedicated for children are not the same ones selected for a hotel lobby. Every space, location, demographics and culture provides its independent needs and requirements to make it suitable to the needs of those who will use it. I believe that furnishings should not have an isolated role of solely making things beautiful. Yes, it should fulfill a pleasant aesthetic and functionality, but also it should have a purpose, like protecting our environment. The sustainable development is essential in the process and choice of materials in the manufacturing of these elements in addition to the value they bring to the interior space. As a designer, my goal is to protect public health, life safety, and well-being through a valuable experience to the user. And I accomplish that through responsible design decisions in the different stages of the project. From a furnishings standpoint, I rely on sustainable solutions that minimize negative environmental, health, and social impacts. 
I see sustainability as impactful as universal design. Remember in the previous episode, we discussed that the benefits of universal design not only benefit people with physical disabilities, but it has been proven to be unexpectedly useful for a wider range of people. Remember, for example, that we chatted about the curb cut effect, the small ramp grading down the sidewalk to connect it to the adjoining street. This not only allowed wheelchair users to easily move on and off the sidewalk, but also benefited parents with strollers, cyclists, and delivery workers, among others. This was a phenomenon where accommodations were made for a minority and ended up benefiting a much larger population in expected and unexpected ways. In my opinion, the same phenomenon happens with sustainability, and we will chat about this in further episodes. When furniture complements the architectural scale, spaces feel more comfortable and welcoming. A room with high ceilings and grand architectural details, but with small furniture, will look out of proportion and out of place. Conversely, oversized furniture can overwhelm a small space, making it feel cramped and claustrophobic. The same concept applies to the rest of the furnishings. Curtains, area rugs, casework, and vegetation All of the different parts and pieces play an important role to convey the design intent masterfully. The harmonious relationship between space, optics, and people will determine the success or the failure of the intended area. If you feel identified and connected with this podcast, please join the Design Conversations and invite your friends and family to be part of our community. I will be here every Friday to chat with you about interesting topics within the fascinating interior design world. In the next episode, I will chat with you about the relevance of sustainability in interior design. If there is a specific topic that you want me to discuss, or if you have any questions, please feel free to DM me through Instagram or Facebook. Also, you can send me an email at thinkdesignprovoke at gmail.com. Please follow me on my social media platforms at Studio Chefs to continue the design conversation. In the episode notes, I am including the contact links for your reference. If you find value in this content, please share this episode in your social media or chats. And remember to leave me a review on Apple Podcasts or your favorite audio platform. Thank you for your attention and for being on the other side. It is my absolute pleasure to be here with you. I'll chat with you next Friday. And remember, everything in the built environment is by design and you are part of it. Ciao, ciao.